Hey, this is John Five, and you're watching Loudwire. Hey everyone, Graham from Loudwire here, and it's Wikipedia Factor Fiction time with Mr. John Five. Thanks Graham, so much for how giving are me you? Oh, I'm great. Thank you so much for giving me some of your Absolutely. time. Absolutely. For you, oh, anything. Please, please. So, I went through your Wikipedia page, pages. Yes. Pulled out a bunch of stuff. Yes. You'll prove if it's right or wrong. Yeah, yes. there's a lot of lot of stuff on there. Really? Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see if I caught it then. Okay. First of all, because they do get this wrong sometimes, uh, your name John William Lowry, born in Gross Point, Michigan. That is correct. That's correct. Okay. Very good. Uh, you first started playing guitar at the age of seven, after watching Buck Owens and Roy Clark's TV show Hee Haw with your dad. That that is partially correct. I partially. I would, I would okay. watch Hee Haw all the time, and there's a cool story behind this. There, I saw this little boy playing banjo, and he won the banjo competition in 1976. And this is on Hee Haw, and uh, so I'm watching this, and he's playing with Roy Clark, and I'm like, oh my God, this kid's amazing, and he's amazing. So. You know, after I was looking at all the porn in the hotel room, you know, like going through the internet and all that stuff, I was like, hey, I wonder if this clip is on YouTube of this young kid. And sure enough, his, I think his name was Jimmy Henley. And, and um, I put it in and sure enough, there it was. And I, saw, and I said to myself, that's the clip that made me play guitar. That's what made wow. me pick up. And even back then when I was so young, I was like, I don't, you know, know of any cool guys playing banjo getting girls so uh, even at that young age so that's why I play guitar but yeah it's from Hee Haw yeah better better playing the guitar than the banjo for the yeah, ladies yeah, yeah. I, I would assume depends what part of the country you're in maybe uh, it says your parents supported your playing as long as it did not interfere with your education uh, and they accompanied you to bars when you would play during the evening growing up yeah I would yeah. the deal was that is correct. The deal was as long as I got up for school the next day, because, you know, you would usually play at like midnight or something sure. like that. But funny story, I was in the, <laughs> this, is, this is horrible, but I was in this band called Vampirilla. Pretty cool name. Not bad, not bad. And these guys, you know, they were like mid-twenties and they all had jet black hair down to their waist and it was rad looking. And I went to like a prep school and I had like, you know, just total preppy looking but I could play all the songs so they got me in the band but they made me wear a wig they made you wear a wig when they you made performed. me wear a jet black oh, no. long-haired wig and it was hilarious I still have pictures of it it's amazing any footage of that on YouTube I hope not said you started your career as a session guitarist moving to Los Angeles from Michigan at age 17 and your first band in Los Angeles was called Alligator Soup. Yeah, horrible name, That's, right? It, it's a bad name. That's but a bad name. It may have been a good band. Was it a good band? It was. It was a good band. Here's a, here's a cool story. Okay. All right. So we're playing Alligator Soup, and we're getting a little name around Hollywood, you know, like whatever. So we're playing Gazaris when Gazaris was still Gazaris, and. This Rudy Sarzo, when he was in White Snake, White Snake was like massive at this time, was looking to put together a band. And this girl, Betsy Browning, I still remember her name, um, she was like, There's this guitar player that's playing tonight, you know, and uh, they're playing at Gazari's, come and see it. So I was like, Oh, okay, cool, you know, I heard, but, you know, Rudy Sarzo coming to our show, you know, nobody came to our show. That's pretty amazing. Especially named Alligator Soup. So we were playing our song and Rudy Sarzo and his wife were front row. There was nobody else in the whole place. No joke, nobody else was there. And we're playing this like instrumental thing and the singer comes out, hits his head on the bar, blood is gushing down his face and he freaks out, the singer freaks out, runs off the stage and says guitar solo. So I break into this guitar solo and Rudy thought it was all part of the show. He was like, this is the greatest show I've ever seen. So. Uh, then, you know, he took me out to um, breakfast, and that's when he asked me to be in a band and with so him. So if it wasn't for the singer bashing his head in, you may have never really hooked up with Rudy Sarzo. Maybe not. He, he may have not heard that guitar solo. Yeah, he, he, all, he thought it was all part of the show. Isn't that's that great? That's great. That's yeah. killer. Awesome. Is this too long? 
No, no. Okay, Talk good. For as good. long as you want. It's okay, all good. Because I've seen this before, and they're like, yep, that's true. Well, see, that's not fun <laughs> when they just go, yep. The stories that would make it good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, in 96, uh, you went to your first audition with Marilyn Manson, but narrowly missed out uh, because you were late. Actually, that's false. That's fiction. Very that good. is fiction. But I have a story. So I heard, I loved Marilyn Manson. Sure. And this is when they were doing um, Antichrist Superstar, like right in between Antichrist and Mechanical Animals. Maybe Antichrist. So I heard they were looking for a guitar player, and I just call, like called the studio that I heard they were in in New Orleans, and I said, are, do you, are you guys looking for a guitar player? And they said, we found somebody, and hung up the phone. That's so, it? So that's how, so that's how it happened. Wow, so there was no audition in the first place, really? No, no, so I just called cold, you know? And then I was playing with Halford and David Lee Roth, and um, with Halford, it was, I think we were on Nothing Records, Trent Reznor's. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they said, oh, Manson was looking for a guitar player, There's, and then that's how that all came together. Okay, so some good to clear that up. Yeah. Uh, speaking of the band, too, uh, Voyeurs. The album produced one video made by gay porn director Shishi LaRue for the single I Am A Pig. It featured some S&M scenes and was not very widely broadcast, but contrary to what many people think, it was not banned by MTV. Let me tell you. Please that, do. That shoot, <laughs> you know like, you know when you're like masturbating sure. and you're like fantasizing about like crazy shit that like you're thinking that could never happen. That's what happened at this shoot, at this right. video shoot. It was insane. It was the craziest thing that ever happened. It was so rad. I still <laughs> fantasize about that. That wow. it was crazy because there were so many like porn stars and the girls and the. I was like, oh my god. I remember this girl like, like I was like, oh my god, looking around and looking around because I was all like noodleless. And this girl, <laughs> I swear to God, she went. Oh, I feel bad for you. And she grabbed my dong and was like rubbing it. And I was like, this is the greatest thing ever. Yeah. So you didn't get that playing a banjo. No, you don't no. get that playing a banjo. Oh, uh, how did Rob feel? Was he comfortable in that situation? You know, I hardly saw Rob. I was like, just like, I was like that. It was, it was the greatest thing ever. Man, he, greatest, greatest video ever. He missed out, man. Yeah. He missed out. Uh, David Lee Roth. Uh, Scheduled a meeting and then scheduled a recording session with you that resulted in the DLR band album. Uh, and during recording, Roth told you, if you can't do it in two takes, you can't do it. Yes, that is true. And wow. it scared the hell out That's of me. That's some pressure. But here, here's more to the story. There was, um, I was rehearsing with Halford because we were going to Europe. And Dave said, well, I don't want you after rehearsal. I want you fresh. Because after rehearsal, you might be a little tired, hungry, whatever. So Dave was like, what time do you start rehearsal? I said, I start at noon. And he goes, okay, well, I want you first, so we're going to have our, I'll never forget this, we're going to have start time at 6 a.m. I was like, 6 a.m.? 6 a.m. at Oceanway Studios. And so I was like, okay. So I got there, 6 a.m. I remember driving there, no cars on the freeway, sun's coming up. I was like, this is incredible. You know, he's my hero. So we got there, and I'm tuning up, and I'm Ray Luzier from Corn was a drummer on the thing. So I remember he said to me, all right, boys, we're going to do this just like the Van Halen days. If you can't do it in two takes, you can't do it. Let's get going. And I was like, oh, my God. You know, I can hardly walk straight at, two, at 6 in the morning. Yeah. Wikipedia says you once auditioned to be Ozzy Osbourne's bassist. Totally false. I could not see you like yeah. putting down the guitar for anybody. No, no, no. totally false. Totally false. I wonder Very where good. that came from. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I have no idea. But it's that's what it said. Yeah. yeah. All right. After uh, Marilyn Manson guitarist Zim Zum was dismissed from the band, you received a call from Manson's manager asking if you'd like to meet him for lunch. Uh, at the meeting, Manson asked you to join the band. You accepted, and Manson gave you the name John Five right then and there on the spot. That is true. We met at Gaucho Grill. I got home from Europe with Halford, like yeah. I was saying before. 
and I didn't even audition, you know. They just asked me, he just asked me to be in the band. And I remember going home to my apartment and drawing, trying to figure out how to do my autograph. Like John the 5. The John 5 autograph, yeah. yeah, yeah. So then, you know how the shock symbol is with Manson, how there's a shock symbol and there's a yeah. circle around it. Sure. And that's why I did the 5 with the circle around it. Last one. It says uh, that Rob Zombie was looking to quit the music industry to concentrate on his movie career until he began to work with you, and that re-inspired him. You know, I've heard this, but I highly doubt it. I mean, when I joined, we he said, we're going to do OzFest six weeks, don't get comfortable. You know, it's only okay. six weeks, I'm going to be making movies, don't get comfortable. But we had so much fun. We had a blast. We were like, like you know, like in, did you ever see Step Brothers? Oh, where, sure. Where they finally, like, become friends, and they're like, you want to do karate in the garage? Did we just become best friends? It was like that. Yeah. And we just, you know, it's been 12, 13 years now. So it's been the longest six weeks and the best six weeks of my life. Very good. John, thank you so much for giving me your time today, man. Absolutely. I appreciate it so much. Make sure Graham, you go out there. That's right. My Make pleasure. Make sure you go out there and get the new record, Seasons of the Witch, from John 5 right now and see him with Rob Zombie from here until the six weeks is finally over. Let's hope it doesn't end soon. Thank you, man.